How you doing, people? I'm Dave Rubin. This is The Rubin Report, and we are doing the biggest, gayest show we've done. We do a lot of gay stuff here. It's been a big gay year, usually good news. I have brought two of YouTube's gayest gay superstars, Hank Chen, Davey Wavy. I'll take it. Is are that you guys us? Yeah. the gayest ones? You guys were, I looked through the list of gay YouTube people, and both of you were on the top of the list. We're up there. And yeah. here we are. <laughs> I'll take it. You ready to be gay and do some more? Okay. We're on YouTube right now, so this is this should be very comfortable. Oh, hi. This is so exciting. There you go. All right, let's talk some gay stuff. We actually got some great gay news this morning. Uh, Derek Gordon, who is a Division I basketball player at UMass, came out. He is the first Division I basketball player to come out. This, of course, comes on the heels of Jason Collins in the NBA. Michael Sam, uh, NCAA football player, who will make it to the NFL in a couple months. Uh, uh, you guys are big jocks, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> two, two big jocks here um, to talk sports. Uh, I've been working out. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> can we agree that uh, whether you're an athlete or a sports fan or not, can we agree that uh, having another out athlete is all good? Oh, this, yeah. is, this is just good news, right? I love it. I, I think any kind of visibility, no matter who it is, is fantastic. I, I think the power of coming out is through the individual and not through like policies and government thingies and laws and stuff like that. It has to be that personal connection. So I'm sure he's got that ripple effect of his immediate circle and that's going, you know, the people now have to process that and decide whether to accept him for who he is or cut it off. Yeah. Hopefully right. it's the former. All good, all good. Well, I mean, and it's 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 breaking stereotypes. It's like mm -hmm. this is a guy who's not a hairdresser, which is what we see right. with gay people on TV. Yeah. He's he's something different. Um, I mean, the question that we had was is he any good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's pretty decent. That's what I understand. And what okay. is this sport That's called? what I understand. Basketball. I basketball is the dribbling one. Oh, okay. With yeah. the this orange one. ball, right? With the orange ball. Yeah. Through yeah, the, yeah. In the do they kick the it? hoop and the net. Uh, oh, and yeah, the yeah. oh, I like that one. That one's fun. Yeah, yeah. We'll deal with all that later. So, okay. So if it's all good, when do we get to stop celebrating this stuff because I think at some point we do have to get past like everybody that comes out we have to like go crazy about it it literally is the number one trending thing on Twitter as of our taping this so like when, are we are we close to that point where we can just be like oh you came out Clearly great not. Uh, we're just not right <laughs> we're, we're not. not I hope Why never not? though yeah. well I, I, this makes me think I shouldn't have come out I should have like held it a secret for a few years and then like had this big thing because you get so much publicity from it like none of us would ever be talking about this guy right. he wouldn't be trending on Twitter but now he is and and it's great that he came out but this is like millions and millions of dollars of publicity. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. So for three public people that are out, is, is there a little bit of resentment or something? Obviously we're not NCAA <laughs> athletes, but is there a little bit of like, oh, I could have held it in until something big happened and then it would have been even bigger or something like that? I could not have held it in. Anyone who went to middle school knows right. that I could not have held it in. Yeah. But, but also, I don't think I would be here sitting at this desk with you had I not come out. YouTube was my public outing. And to answer an earlier question, I feel like we should never stop celebrating. I mean, are we really going to, at a certain point, cancel the Gay Pride Parade because it's no longer relevant? I well, hope not. Every year, the, every year that <laughs> it's Pride Month, people do talk about that. Should like, we is cancel it still relevant? No, because yeah. every time a black person wins an Oscar, I feel like that's also noteworthy. And that, in the civil rights, you know, for, for other groups has has continued yeah. in, in spite of its longer history than the gay rights movement. It's great. Do you guys think that the, the sports thing is more about the fear from the media or actually what goes on in the locker room? Because that's what everyone thinks, that somehow if there's a gay person in the locker room, even though there obviously have been gay people in the locker room forever. Long time. For yeah. a long time, <laughs> that somehow that's gonna, the players are going to freak out. But I, I, to me, it's more about the media, how the mm -hmm. media is going to react the natural players, I really think they're going to be actuality, okay with it. people probably just don't care. Like, yeah. it's 2014, and the players are probably like, you like dick? That's great. Like, <laughs> Zippity damn. Right, let's right. go play the game. Yeah. yeah. But it's kind of, I think, the, it's like the, ne it's become the talking point this year. It's like that next barrier, the next thing to break through. Yeah. When do you think, last question on this, when do you think we will have an openly straight WNBA player? <laughs> Oof. I say 10 years. Did you get the joke there? Yeah, you got the yes, joke? Yes, I did. I, uh, I, I ho hopefully soon. A lot of lesbians in that league. We, we, support, we support you, we, is, is what I want to say. <laughs> I think that's a perfect finish. We openly support straight, straight. women in the WNBA. OK, let's move on. Uh, so you guys probably heard about this whole Mozilla Firefox CEO fallout situation. Uh, Brendan Ike. Uh, is the CEO or was the CEO of Mozilla until last week. He donated $1,000 to Prop 8 in 2008, the bad side of Prop 8. And then OkCupid found out about this and they blocked 
uh, their site, OkCupid, okay on the Mozilla Firefox browser. Hello there, Mozilla Firefox user. Pardon this interruption of your OkCupid okay experience. Mozilla's new CEO, Brendan Eich, is an opponent of equal rights for gay couples. We would therefore prefer that our users not use Mozilla software to access OkCupid. Okay Okay, so then of course this blowed up into a, blew up into a giant firestorm. He stepped down, uh, but now it turns out that there might be a little hypocrisy here because the CEO of OKCupid okay has uh, donated money to uh, to some things that uh, perhaps. Uh, he's not so proud of now. OkCupid's okay, founder and CEO Sam Yagen made a $500 donation to a congressional candidate who opposed same-sex marriage, voted against a ban on sexual orientation-based job discrimination, and for prohibition of gay adoptions. Records show that Yagen, who's also the CEO of Match.com, donated $500 to Representative Chris Cannon, who's a Republican in Utah in 2004. Um, so before we get to the hypocrisy for this guy, uh, were you guys happy to see uh, the CEO of Mozilla go? Now this is $1,000 yeah. that he did uh, roughly five years ago. I think $1,000, I think it's a significant amount of money. And yeah. I think, you know, when people always say, put your money where your mouth is, people vote with their dollars. So, and, and, and also, it's not just that money, it's also his lack of, um, like retracting or even or the statements supporting that donation even years later. Right. So we have no indication that he doesn't still feel that exactly. way. Exactly. Uh, but a lot has changed in five years, and it is possible that change. And it was only a thousand dollars. So was this a bit of an overreaction to sort of? He didn't get fired. He stepped down. Yeah. I think he had the opportunity to say, you know what? Like it was two thousand and eight. Things are different now. I have evolved my thoughts on gay marriage, mm -hmm. and and you know what? I shouldn't have done that. He he had some opportunity to kind of apologize, yeah. and he really just kind of stood with it and now, said, so, "So even if his thoughts haven't evolved, right. should, should he say, should he have the right? No, but should someone be have the right to be the CEO of a pretty public company uh, and not be for gay marriage? I think it's an interesting question. I guess maybe the answer is probably yes, but I don't think it's I don't think it's smart business sense. Like I don't yeah. think it'd well, be smart. Well, Mozilla obviously agrees. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, if I didn't like you know green people, I wouldn't say it because likely some of my customers are green. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it just it just it, shut your mouth. Right. <laughs> so yeah, go for ahead. Mozilla, it was just like such a distraction that he kind of had to yeah. if they mm -hmm. were going to move forward at all. And then he he, he kind of had to step down. What do you guys think about the the hypocrisy of the OK Cupid guy? So he bans the Mozilla you know, explorer or whatever on, right. uh, for his site, but it turns out that he has donated to some things that he may not be so proud of too. But I think the difference being that since this is like years and years later, he has had the opportunity to say, you know what, I supported this then, I don't support it now. And mm -hmm. so I think people can kind of make that differentiation. Yeah. Um, are either one of you guys fans of uh, Urban Outfitters by any chance? I like Urban Outfitters. Yeah, I think that t-shirt might be Urban is, Outfitters. Is it, it, is it not? It's not. not. Do I need to take it off? It no. is. <laughs> I trust you. I, I know you gladly have, will take it let's off. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, uh, because the owner, uh, the president and founder of Urban Outfitters has donated money to Rick Santorum's campaign. Mm -hmm. He said some other anti-gay stuff. Yeah. So it is weird how we sort of pick and choose who we decide to rail against. Well, we hear we that right? on YouTube all the time. If we wear something that is from Urban Outfitters and people recognize it, people will email me and mm -hmm. be like, you wore that shirt. It's from oh, Urban really? Outfitters. I can't believe you're supporting this. So what's I'm, your personal policy on that? So you do wear Urban Outfitters despite knowing that? I mean, I full disclosure, I have plenty of Urban Outfitters stuff. Yeah, so. me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't realize when I bought the shirt that I was, you know, look, on the internet, you can't win no matter what you do. Yeah. And and you can try to tread as, you could you could donate a million dollars to schools in Africa and people will email you and say, you know what, there's a lot of work that needs to be done at home. Yeah. <laughs> like, you just can't win. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, all right, so with every, so since we're winning the war here, <laughs> Right. Since we're winning this gay war, yeah. it's. I mean, we're getting gay marriage in yes, every state every couple true. weeks. Some <laughs> activist judge does something, and we get some more gay count. marriage. It's very um, good. Do you think, in a weird way, that the gay community should somehow figure out a way to be a little more gracious somehow for these people? Should we figure it not gracious exactly, but should we figure out a way to be a little more open to these people that maybe did things five years ago that whether they're proud of it or not? I know it's putting. I know it's putting it on us, which I think is sort of difficult because we still don't have full equality, but I think there's something to that. That there's these people holding on to something that they're losing, and maybe we should somehow figure out a way to embrace them a little bit more, instead of everyone just fighting all the time. I gave you a lot to work with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the question that people are trying to ask is, even if you felt this way, have your 
thought processes evolved? Do you feel this way now? And that's giving, pe that's giving people who are in positions of power and influence in the public eye the opportunity to say either yes or no. And you know, we've all, we all grow and learn. I'm not the same person that I was five years ago. And, and so people are wanting to see where their leaders stand today. And so I think the leaders who are not being as tactful as they should be are getting a little bit of blowback. Yeah. Are you yeah. with him on that? Yeah, I, I am. I, I don't care so much what someone said 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing with the gay rights movement is that we're hoping to change hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. And when we do that with someone, we can't hold that against them, that, that their opinion is now different. And, and I think that's a great thing. If they still think that I shouldn't get married, I will, I will not have compassion yeah, for them. Yeah, we have a problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well said. OK, let's talk about the gay mafia, because that's been the big story this week. Because Bill Maher on Overtime, which is the online-only show that they do on real time after the show, uh, he implied that there actually is a gay mafia. Let's take a look. What do you think of the Mozilla CEO having to step down over his donation to Pro Proposition 8 Group? Yeah, the Mozilla. Uh, which I'm wearing right now, by the way. I, uh, I didn't know what Mozilla was. I saw it on my computer, but uh, it's it's Firefox, right? It's the, uh, yes, the browser. It's okay. an STD. So this guy apparently does not want gay people to get married, and uh, he had to step down. What do you think of that? The question is. I guess he gave a thousand dollars eight years ago, and it's come back to haunt him. Well, and he gave it when President Obama yeah. still was against gay marriage. So I don't think it's very fair. Good point. Also. Uh, I think there is a gay mafia. <laughs> I, think, I think if you cross them, you do get whacked. I really do. <laughs> Okay, I think there was some odd uh, sexual connotation to the way he said whacked. Wasn't there something there? There's I'm whacked. Aroused. It I seemed you were a little aroused. You did. I'm fully aroused. So, yeah. <laughs> something, <laughs> seemed, something seemed a little bizarre. Okay, so they talked a little bit about the Mozilla CEO, as we just did in the previous segment. Um, but he, the way Bill says it, he's half joking, but the way he's sort of leaning in his chair is also like, yeah, I'm in this thing. I'm in Hollywood. I'm pretty entrenched, and I know this thing exists. So you two professional gay people, <laughs> does the gay mafia exist? Davey Wavy. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Hank Chen. Uh, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> no, I mean, really. I don't does, think it exists. You don't think it, I don't think it exists. You don't think there's an organized group of gay people that are meeting somewhere that are powerful well, Hollywood? It's not that organized. I think there's a group of gay, I think there are gay friend circles as there are in any professional you know, setting, mm -hmm. and they do favors for each other. I don't believe that anyone is pulling strings that and involve... getting people whacked. Yeah. Right. So when the right-wing people, because we've got a list of things that people claim that the gay mafia does, they say that, uh, you know, they started the firestorm, the Duck Dynasty thing. That was the gay mafia. Mm -hmm. But then the gay mafia lost that one, I guess, because Duck Dynasty's still on. Alec Baldwin, everybody's uh, favorite hate monger, he lost his gig at MSNBC. That must be the gay mafia. Um, and then the CEO, obviously, of Mozilla. So you guys really don't, you just don't believe this. Well, I think what there is is probably a group of very wealthy gay men mm -hmm. that get together and decide like what, can, what candidates they're going to fund, where they're going to put their money, the things that they're going to try to influence with their dollars. I don't think that they're like thinking that they're going to make some firestorm about Duck Dynasty. I think that was the media. Yeah. And, and I think the, um, with the Firefox, like it's, it's, it's public opinion that, that this guy was, like gay mafia now is public opinion. That's why he stepped down. Okay, so I, that I agree with. That yeah. what they're calling gay mafia really is just glad HRC, right. the rest of that stuff. Which whether you like those organizations or not, every group in this country has their advocacy right. groups that are trying to to do things. Would it be the worst thing in the world if we actually had a gay mafia? If they really, if it came out that yes, there is a group of gay people trying to pull some strings so that gay people become more equal, and you see better images of gay people in media and things like that, would that be that bad? If it's phrased like that, the answer is no. But I think the gay mafia are all the 14-year-old white girls on Twitter <laughs> that back up wow. their people like you yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, and it will come to your defense no, you're right. over right. everything. So That's every the gay time mafia. you post a, a shirtless video, it's all the 14-year-old girls that click and like. 60-year-old men. Uh, yeah. yeah you know. I did. That's the real gay mafia. <laughs> yeah. I did a YouTube video at Playlist Live, and I had to kiss straight guys in it. And I was like, no one is going to kiss me. Like, no straight guy is going to do this. I had like 60 14-year-old girls running with me up to these guys like, kiss him! <laughs> that is the fucking Dude. gay mafia. That's, that's and they the did. They kissed me. Yeah, that's They're the like, okay, yeah, okay. Oh. I, won, I won the challenge. Yeah, they were afraid not to. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. I have brought on two professional gay YouTubers. I know a little something about this myself, and we don't know if there is a gay mafia, which maybe means yeah. we're, on, we're on the outs. Probably. Oh, God. Invite us in, guys. If this is really around, hello. Yeah, really, please. I mean, what more can we do yeah. for you? Okay. <laughs>
A court in Egypt this week sentenced four men up to eight years in prison for, yeah, homosexuality. Uh, prosecutors had accused the men of holding, quote, deviant parties, and uh, they're using a law that bans debauchery to, uh, to put these guys in jail and put them on trial. Uh, the Middle East seems to be pretty backwards, as we've talked often about related to anything with human rights, women's rights, gay rights, et cetera, et cetera. We've got a map. Uh, that it gives you a little more about gay rights around the globe and basically red and the darker red you are, the worse it is. Blue and the darker blue you are, the better it is. And, uh, and gray, it's pretty, it's pretty decent. Um, how do we get the Middle East into the 21st century? I get it, we're not perfect here. We do not have full marriage equality here. We got plenty of problems here. But how do we get that section of the world to at least come a little bit further in this direction. Well, funny you should say the word come in that question, because right. if they look at their own history, Egypt gave you Cleopatra, who was one of the more sexually deviant characters in, in history. Apparently, this woman used to have hundreds of men contribute to her baths, good for her skin or whatever. And I was like, and now we have an issue with one-on-one. -on -one? I was like, I don't, under I don't understand the logic Wait, what? That. Hundreds of men did what? <laughs> contribute to her baths. Contribute? Come in a bathtub and she would bathe in it. <laughs> Is that, I've never heard that Are before. Are you kidding me? It's all over the internet. Do you I am the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard, so she your was bathing. Looks great. Your skin looks really That's good. That's my secret. Yeah, yeah. she was bathing. Wow, I did not know that. Is it true? It's it's one of she bitch was sexually deviant. Whether yeah. or not that's yeah. like a mythological whatever, you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like in every I, I love it. All these conservative cultures, even like Asian. I mean, I'll, let's you know, I'll just point it out to myself. Yeah. Chinese history, there's some weird ass shit that went down, and then they're like, oh, no gay people, no gay people. I'm like, really? Because y'all did some kinky ass shit back in your dynasties, you know? Right. Yeah. Do we have any right to did tell? Did that answer the question? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that answered the My question. My point, I, I, I said, get them to look at their own history. And and realize yeah. the hypocrisy in, you know, like where did we come from? Where are we going? Well, I guess yeah. that in the case of Egypt, yeah. so that's a place where science and uh, <laughs> liberalism were re rewarded a little more a long time ago, and they've sort of gone backwards. Do we have any right in the United States to uh, tell these people how to live? Well, I, mean, I know all the YouTube commenters are going to say no, because every time I pose that question, everyone yells and says, you, uh, you know, right. we it's need to mind culture, our own business. It's a different culture. Yeah. Mm. But, but know, should we care about the, their human rights? Well, I think we should. My, my, we are human beings, and we are tied by that thread. My eighth most viewed country is Saudi Arabia, which is Interesting. right on that map in color red, you know, and, and it's amazing. I think what's being done on YouTube, not that we're saving the world or curing cancer or, you know, but I think it is a step in that journey towards getting people to move mm -hmm. a little bit forward with the way that they view gay rights. Do you get a lot of comments from, from people from Saudi Arabia and that part of the world? Because we did a video last week about women driving in Saudi Arabia, and I actually got a lot of men from Saudi Arabia angry saying that women shouldn't be allowed to drive, and if you let women drive, there's gonna be more car accidents, all that stuff. And I kind of felt bad for them more than anything else because they're just being indoctrinated right. with this stuff. Um, so it's like, I can't hate them, really, because that's what they're being taught. But do you get a lot of comments on your videos? From I get a lot of emails from people yeah. that are in countries where it's like not as accepted. But the, the important thing is like you're starting a dialogue. Like you're starting a conversation that they might not otherwise have. Yeah. And like, is it going to solve all the problems? No, but maybe it's gonna get that ball mo moving a little bit. Yeah. Is there anything that the governments should do? I mean, should we be, Egypt is our ally, we give them a lot of money. Should that be contingent on uh, human rights? I think, I think we should tread carefully because I don't understand what's going on in, when it comes to business affairs. I don't run this country. I'm not a policy maker because I know that there's a lot. You're I mean, not a policy maker. I try, Hank Chen, I thought you said policy maker Nobody will listen to me, will listen to me Dave Rubin. Make them listen to me. Uh, but you know, I mean, uh, there's a lot that goes on. We don't know what kind of wheel, wheel and dealing goes on between these world leaders. And I think in order to protect American interests, we have to tread carefully when we stick our nose into other people's business. But with that being said, human to human, I, I think that's why we do what we do because I like reaching people on a personal level. I too get a lot of uh, people in these very conservative countries, uh, including the Middle East as well as parts of Asia, who and they're closeted and they're scared. Uh, and I do what I can from that level. But I, 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 
and that's that's the only thing I'm able to do at this point. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess everyone does their little part. Uh, by the way, we should note that Gay Cities, which is a big gay website, they did their poll of what the best gay city is in the world. And last year, it was Tel Aviv, Israel, which is smack in the middle of the Middle East. What is with those crazy Jews that they're down <laughs> with the gays while everybody else around them seems to want to kill them? Barbara Walters, after 50 plus years doing network television, she has announced her retirement. And uh, earlier this week on The View, she actually gave us a date. Let's take a look. You may remember that last spring I said that I would leave daily television in a year. So here we are. It's almost one year later. And I have decided that Friday, May 16th, will be my final appearance on The View as a co-host. Oh. <laughs> well, and that evening, May 16th, there will be a two-hour ABC News primetime special. Looking back at my career for over 50 continuous years on the air. Wow. <laughs> Man, I've been doing a YouTube show for a year, and I think that's a long time. 50 <laughs> consecutive years on air. So I want to talk about Barbara first, and then we'll talk about The View. Why is it that Barbara Walters doesn't get into that gay icon status that these older women seem to get into? Of course, for me, the Golden Girls. But all there's just plenty of older women, uh, you know, Judy Garland, whoever, that the gay community loves. For some reason, Barbara Walters, even though she's a proponent of gay rights and is on TV every day and talking about liberal causes and things like that, she never made it there for some reason. I just I find it hard to trust anyone with eyes that are just that big. <laughs> it's the work, but gays don't have a problem with a woman with work. Come on. No, no. Yeah, I don't. You know, I I think that she comes across as like a little pretentious. At the same time, I appreciate the barriers that she has broken down and mm -hmm. that she was like really at the forefront of what she was doing. Um, but I just don't feel like the same warm fuzzy. I don't know. She kind of strikes me as a cunt. So, <laughs> just wow. kind of. Wow. Just kind of strikes. Well, him all right. As. To that point, is is it partly because she's a newswoman, so she's more serious than gay is like over the top? I was right. Gay is like camp. Yeah, she doesn't have a drag doppelganger. I think is the thing. It's hard to. You're right. It's hard to impersonate her into. I, I, you know, all of our icons are performers mostly. Yeah. They're easier to emulate. And Betty White is a comedian, even though she's not a singer. Yeah. So, but shouldn't we love someone like Barbara Walters, who did break down all those barriers and is actually doing something? I mean, she did. She did for women what we want someone to do. For gay people, right? I think we do love her. I love her. Yeah. I highly respect her. I think she's fierce as hell. The way she like reigns in the view and like <laughs> cuts ho co hosts down yeah. as, as they step out of line. She brings them in and cuts yeah, them down. I think people really respect her. I certainly really adore her, and I think she's. I, I find her to be inspirational and very ambitious. I, but I think you. I never thought about this, but yeah, she's difficult to. I, I, I can, uh, eyes, whatever, whatever that word is. That you was, know what close, I mean? that was yeah. close to the word. All right, yeah. so let's talk about The View a little bit, because I, I think there's something really fascinating with The View and gay people. I There was a couple years where I watched The View every day when Rosie was on oh my God. and Joy were, was on. I, they were so amazing together. They're, Rosie obviously is gay. Joy is as close to gay as possible, I guess, without <laughs> being gay. Um, what is it about The View, and what is it about a group of women that are outspoken that gays love. Well, because if there was a show of five gay guys sitting around a table or four gay guys, gays would not be into no, it. No, we would never watch. So, so what is that? What is that? Well, I mean, I, I like to watch it because I like to see how like disinterested Joy is, and she's just like <laughs> trying to get through the show. That she's just like, is this really another week of The View? <laughs> Which is probably why she left The View after what tw she was on for twelve years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think you can't paint all gay people with a broad brush that like all gay people like The View. But it's the same reason that people like The View. It's it's a distraction from everyday life. Like there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of cattiness that goes on. Yeah. Um, and and you know people people like that. But it's like what masturbating. Is it? what? It's like, it <laughs> is. Yeah. It's like kind of like this like meaningless. Oh okay yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Right. What is this it though good. about yeah. what is it though about gay guys that I, are you guys with me that if it had been a table of four gay guys that it never would have done nearly as well as having women. Uh, Maybe middle-aged women would have liked it because middle-aged women love gay guys, but that gay guys wouldn't have been as into it if it had been gay guys at the table. I agree with you. I think it's. I think there's not as wide of appeal if it's all just gay men. But that's a cultural thing for another. You know, that's another side conversation. Right. But I'm talking about four yes. gay men watching it. What, what? Why is it that gay men would be more inclined to watch a group of women at a table than gay men at a table? 
I think it's the same reason why gay men loved Sex in the City, because that show, those were gay men masquerading as women. I think the, the, the cast of The View, those are gay men masquerading as women. I think those conversations remind us of private conversations that we have. I think we love the fashion, we love the hair. We, there's, a, there's a certain element of glam, and, yeah. and it's, it's elevated, it's, it's heightened. It's our lives heightened for, you know, and now you're right, we can't paint it with the, with the big brush, but it, their appeal is the same reason uh, that the reality shows have appeal yeah. and fashion shows have appeal, so. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, all right, final thought on this. I was thinking, you know, Barbara said the thing about the, the 50 years and all that. Do you think that's just like a thing that's long gone? People that are gonna have these sort of uh, iconoclastic, I think is the word there we, we were go. saying before, uh, <laughs> careers where they last 50 years in the biz, is, is she really one of the sort of, I don't want to call her a dinosaur, but you know what I mean? Is she, is that it, really? That we won't have people that last this long in this kind of business? Well, I mean, it, I don't think so. I think there's going to be other people that, that are doing that. But the important thing with Barbara Walters is that like, she broke down so many barriers that stood in her way that like, like in that sense, she's legendary in what she did. Right. And there will be other people at the front of their game doing things that have never been done, but those were some like really big walls to break down. Yeah, so I guess there aren't that many walls to break down, hopefully, different right? Walls. As things, yeah. different walls are just to pop up. Not right. for her, right. know, not, so, or not for people of her, you know, not for white women in broadcasting. Right. <laughs> here. There'll right. be other walls yeah, to right. break down. Uh, well, speaking of walls to break down, uh, there's a good chance we're gonna have a female president in 2016. Have you heard of this Hillary Clinton woman? Uh, apparently, <laughs> she's gonna run for president. That's what everyone's saying. And as we are doing our Big Gay Spectacular show this week, I wanted to talk about why gays love Hillary. We were just talking about why gays sorta don't love Barbara Walters, but gays love freaking Hillary Clinton. Every yes. gay loves her. They just did a huge fundraiser for her, her at uh, the Abbey here in West Hollywood. Yep. Tons of gays were there. She's getting all the money gays. Gays voted far more for her in 2008 than they did for uh, Barack Obama. What is it about Hillary and the gays? Well, you know what? I think it's, it's a mutual appreciation because my first gay pride parade was 2005, New York City. In, in, in the world of gay rights, like that was a lifetime ago, mm -hmm. like that was a very different world than where we're at now. Yeah, and she was marching in that parade. Yeah, and I she was, was like, senator from New York. At the yeah, time. and yeah. I was like so impressed. Like there she was with her rainbow flag. And so I think part of the reason why we love her is because she supports us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and, and not every gay likes her, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> are there said, some that yes, don't? I mean, I can. Yeah. Yeah, I personally, in good conscience, can't vote for another Clinton or Bush. I just simply will not do it. Oh, we, interesting. We left England for a reason, okay. and I don't think <laughs> that families, I never had anyone in my family that was president. Have you guys? Not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm pretty sure no. they don't need more of them. You know what I mean? Because then we're just going to have Malia 2026. I, I just think it's... <laughs> oh, I'll so I just can't... Malia no, Obama. I know. Malia Obama. It's really <laughs> sickening, the worshipping of these people. Um, do you think she's going to suffer in a weird way from every Democrat in 2016 is going to be for gay rights, right? I mean, it's, it's in the party platform. So in a weird way, she's going to lose a little gay support because gays won't have to vote, at least Democratic gays in the primaries, won't have to vote on gay issues. You follow me? I do. She gets seniority because she, she gets, she's going to get it either way. She's going to get she gets seniority simply because of her history. And you know, I, and I wasn't at the 2005 Pride Parade. I might have been seven at the time. I'm just kidding. I wasn't yeah. seven at the time. But yeah. uh, I remember her speech, her 30 minute speech that she gave at the UN. Yeah. Uh, and that was also very progressive. Uh, I believe that was 2010, 11, right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 I was like, that's ballsy because she's speaking to these countries that we've mentioned earlier that are very conservative and actually have laws that persecute gay people and I so I think gays admire her because because of the cojones <laughs> the uh, people and people it's historic too it like is. she would be she would be the first female president yes. and yeah. like and I think like people for better or worse like people people that's part of it like yeah. that's part of the kind of the enamor and, and that she's just so incredible um, so this sort of goes to what we were talking about with The View, but do you guys think that if there was a gay male that had the exact same uh, resume, I guess that would be tough because she was mm. first lady, but if there was a gay male who had the same exact, in terms of voting record and being pro-gay and all that, that the gays would embrace that person? I think the gays would. The gays, I know, I'm gonna get yelled at for that. The gays. Well, no, no, no. I, I, I'm using I, an umbrella. 
Well, you know, amongst us boys, we all know that there's plenty of segregation discrimination within the gay community as well. Someone's going to think he's to this, someone think he's going to not, nah, someone's going to want to ask, is, is he a top or a bottom, and they're going to have an opinion about that. I think, uh, it's sad to say, I don't know if the gay community would fully back a gay candidate. I think we have to look at uh, the, the gay candidates, or the gay uh, congressmen, the gay senators that currently are already in office, and see what that kind of voting record has been like. But yeah. well, unfortunately, we're just pickier. So, I, I, <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I think there's something about, in, 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 I don't know how best to say this, but that like, not all gay men enjoy seeing other gay men succeed. So what, what do you think? So okay, There's on a like micro level, there's deeper there that happens that like where they're very quick to cut other gay men down. Yeah. So that's what I was talking about with the view thing before. So what do you mm -hmm. think that's about? Because I do, I d absolutely think if there was an openly gay candidate running for president that had the same exact platform as Hillary, right. the gays would not be into him. And I, I don't know what the answer is, and right. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. But on a micro level, you guys are gay YouTubers. I mean, don't you get plenty of hate from the gay community? Oh yeah, more hate from the gay community than from the straight community. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I, and I don't know. So I, in your own little world, what do you, what do you make of that? I, I think it's a, it's, it's a very complex question, and I think, I don't know. I, I don't know what the easy answer is, yeah. but I think what I have seen is that gay men are very kind of quick to cut each other down. That it's like, and, and I think it's not something that just happens in the gay world. I think it happens with women seeing other women succeed. I've mm -hmm. heard this from my friends. Um, and uh, so I think it's like a phenomenon that happens in marginalized communities. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not a good look. Um, but it's definitely. <laughs> but it is a look. But it's a look. But it is and a it look. happens. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I do. I think it's just a projection of our own insecurities and the things that we had to deal with during our coming out process. And it's and it's sometimes it's difficult to be happy for other people when it comes to to their success. And and I was going to say, if you want to project the public opinion on a potential gay presidential candidate, you can just look at some of our gay celebrities. Now, every public gay celebrity entertainment usually can be a little bit of a lightning rod for controversy. Even Anderson Cooper, who is pretty, as vanilla as they right. come, people love him, people hate him. And we're talking about just the gays. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you've given me a perfect segue here <laughs> because we got one more segment for you. And this is on the glass closet. And I thought it would be perfect to talk to these guys about this. If you don't know the term, the glass closet, it is, I'm gonna read this because I wanna get it fully right. It is a term used for a gay person, usually a public figure or celebrity, who has never publicly come out as being gay, but is basically known to be gay. There are many of these people. Now, I'm not gonna out anyone. We had a debate before the show. I'm not going to out <laughs> anyone here, but I have written four names here on this, this piece of trouble. paper. And I don't want you guys to repeat these names, <laughs> okay. but there are four names here that are very, very public people. Uh, in Hollywood, won a major TV star, won a major movie star, won a major mu music star, et cetera, that pretty much everyone in the gay community knows is gay. Again, I am not outing anyone. I just want you guys to look at this. Let's keep it on me for a second so that the wide shot doesn't even see this, uh. okay? Now we're just looking at that. One of them's big in news and sort of has been outed recently by a major newspaper. Okay, now, my question is this. Yes. With these people, I have no reason to think that any of them are anti-gay. Actually, some of them have done publicly pro-gay things, but yet they still refuse to just say it. And I'm curious, as out people, you guys put a lot of stuff out there. You put your full selves out there. You put a lot of skin out there on top of that. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> literally, you're putting your skin in the game. Yeah. Um, and people are how, putting skin into his game. It, whatever whatever <laughs> works. Yeah. Really, how? because I, I, I feel very conflicted by these people. I have no doubt that they're all good people and privately doing good things and probably living happy lives and all that. But as out people, how should we feel about this group of people that sort of is tacitly endorsing this idea that you can live your life still but don't say it. Either one of you, take it away. I would say that the coming out process is different for everyone, and that there's no right way to do it, there's no time that you need to do it by, and, and not that I'm letting any of them off the hook, but that they're probably at, potentially at different points in their coming out journey, and so I think it's very hard to be critical of, of people and, 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 and where they're at. Uh, right. And we see the same thing with with YouTubers, like that. There's YouTubers that are in the closet, and it's easy for us as out YouTubers to say, like, "What are you doing? Like, come out. You can do so much for the cause. You will help change hearts and minds." 
but they just might not be there yet. I mean, there's a lot of processing that has to happen to get to that point. Right, now again, I don't know any or of these. Or they're waiting for the book deal. Ooh, so that's, I think, <laughs> right. maybe what PR it more, because I don't know any of these people personally, but I'm, at the four people that I wrote down here, I'm pretty sure these are all millionaires, uh, probably multi-millionaires. Um, and isn't that, that tacit endorsement that they're sort of saying, well, I could lose this. You know, and I could lose my TV show, I could lose my movie, et cetera, et cetera. Isn't that sort of the worst message you could be sending to a, a 15 year old that maybe wants to go uh, in the movies? You know, you know what I mean? And wants to be an actor. Isn't the, aren't, isn't the uh, subliminal message there that this is almost like the worst thing you could possibly do? I mean, if I were to speculate, and I'm not really in a position to do so, I can only speak from my own experience, but one of them is also fairly quite young, as prominent of a figure as he is. It's yeah, one of these people is pretty young. So yeah. I, would, I think that it's their own emotional journey, and I have no problem with them choosing to remain in the closet yeah. because they are uh, so... Uh, prominent in the public eye as long as you're not living a life of hypocrisy so right. if, as right. if you're not you know vocally voting uh, voting against gay rights or or expressing your disdain yeah. uh, then we're cool and as far as I know most of these people have also been vocal supporters of gay rights they've just never join the club themselves. They've been like, they're like, oh yeah, gays are great, love gays. That's not me, but love the gays. Right, so, yeah. but that's the weird thing, and I think that's why everyone feels so conflicted. When I showed you guys this list, mm -hmm. you both sort of backed up, like, oh shit, we better not talk about that list, because there is this unsaid thing, right, that we shouldn't really, if we were to say this, these mm -hmm. names, people would go berserk. Right. I do want to respect people's privacy. I know that coming yeah. out was a difficult process for myself, and I wasn't even online when that happened. This was just my own little world I was so unbelievably afraid so one can imagine just what they're going through so yeah. I want to be resensitive to that and I would like to and once they're out I tell me your story girl let's 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 hear it what, yeah. what was going I, on I, yeah. listen I totally agree because that's why I did the segment like this and didn't plaster their names <laughs> on everything is the hypocrisy issue is that the big one for you if you saw these four names and saw that one of them was somehow doing some sort of anti-gay thing would that lead you more right uh, yeah I mean that's what what leaves a bad well, bad taste in your mouth, so 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 to speak. So to speak. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll edit it to sound better. <laughs> right. Big laugh. I think that's where it crossed the line. And the message that you were saying of like, you know, they're millionaires and they're afraid that they're that's probably not the message that they think that they're putting out. I, I agree. I don't think they're proactively believing that they're right. doing something bad, but I do think, especially for one of these people who's an actor who is so hugely successful. There's somehow the implication that my success is based in me not coming out. And or, I think that's really dangerous. And I, I, that doesn't mean I'm gonna out him, right. or even think, I don't even think poorly of him, I don't know him. But I, I think that that conflicting message is still something that the gay community is, hasn't quite grappled He yet. probably thinks the message that he's putting out is, it's it none of your matter. fucking business. Yeah. And, and this is my personal life, and, it's, and, and it doesn't matter, it shouldn't be, it, like, the message that we're receiving isn't the same message that he yeah. thinks he's putting out. Um, and and it, it kind of is what it is. At, I think at, both are valid, too. Yeah. I think his perspective, it is, it is valid. There are certain things that, as public as I am, there are certain things that I just don't talk about. Right. Right. And you're not going to get me to talk about them because it's none of your goddamn business. Will, will you at least write them on this paper? And you can <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you this. I don't talk about, my, I don't talk about any, ro any relationships because I've seen YouTubers, celebrities, and we all see, you know, when you get into very public romantic entanglements in the public eye, it just, the fallout's never very good. And I know when you started your blog, you did talk about boyfriends, guys that you were dating. I definitely and, don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's separation of church and state. It's yeah, like yeah. let's keep something sacred for him. His his sexual orientation for some of these people, sexual orientation might be sacred space for them. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I am now going to crush this and burn it. So uh, don't tell anyone you saw that. Hank Chen, Davy Wavy, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much. You were you were a little nervous to do something with a shirt on, but I think you pulled it off. Yeah, I'm definitely outside my comfort zone <laughs> with, with the girls covered up. <laughs> I have to say, but I can still see that they're. It is they're, yeah. very cold yeah. in here. Very yeah, nice. Yeah. All right. Well, don't forget to like and comment. I'm a YouTuber. They're a YouTuber. We know all about this. Like, comment, subscribe. Is there anything else I should tell them to do? Follow us all on Twitter. Their Twitters are right down below. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, post a picture of us on Instagram. Well, we'll and, post and, the and, well, they should. They could do it too, and then put a. I mean, listen. What, let's let's be whores about this. All your social media. Oh, Tumblr, 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 yeah, Tumblr. This. I want <laughs> <to fix. laughs> Just him. Good Just night, him. everybody. <laughs>